But there's only two things you should do in your bedroom. Can anyone guess them? through the, the security, um, I got heavily, heavily frisked and then they took my bag and they were checking my bag and it got really embarrassing because I'm going down to deliver a workshop, whenever I deliver a workshop it's not your kind of traditional keynote that where I just speak and so here's some of the stuff they pulled out my bag and in front of people. A female, a red female wig, did it suit me, what do you think about the colour? The highlights, the brown eyes, <laughs> I had these. Uh, here you go, they all make different noises. My meals, actually my pre-prep meals by Paleo Canteen, they're awesome, so I've got those. Um, I got a new gimbal, as you can see, I'm playing about with it. See y'all on the other side. Absolutely madness. Uh, bumpiest ride I've been on for a while, thank God for all Saints and Pure Shores I had that on to calm me down. I think a lot of people in there required some meditation practice just by the go out and catch an Uber. But we have got a Prius, smooth and economical. The cab ride took forever, but we're in. 16th century barn and it is cool as um, I'm just going to flip the camera around and let you see We're having a little lemon and ginger Gluten is bad It is absolutely beautiful There he is, hello Buddies, I've got buddies. Yo, 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 buddies. Oh, oh We're all creatures of habit. We are, psychologists suggest we're upwards of 98% of our behaviours are habitual. What I want to do in this section is really enlighten you to some of the habits that me, myself, and kind of other people have explored that serve to benefit <coughs> you and help you have greater sleep. We'll go deep on a few of them. There's only two things you should do in your bedroom. Can anyone guess them? Sleep. What's the other one? <laughs> Just say, why is everyone you funny for saying? Sex squad, that's sex squad. That's the only two things you should do in your bed is sleep and sex. But a lot of people, what do they do? They bring their work into their bed. They've got like, they're socialising in their bed, they're dating in their bed, they're playing games in their bed. That is part of, I would suggest that is, it's not what I would traditionally call like a modern night routine, but you're conditioning yourself. A powerful thing to do, in fact I will do it because there's some people who aren't here. Baby conditions, that's what you're talking about. When you have a child, right, there's, if you have any guys, kids, kids, any of you guys get nieces and nephews or babysat kids? Yeah, so what you, what you do with kids is you create baby conditions, right? I'm going to go for you, right? So what would you do if I was your little baby Ross and you wanted to put me to sleep? <laughs> do it then, cuddle me, and what else? Very comfortable bosom. What else would you do? Rub my back, I've not, got wind, I've not got too much wind, so what else would you do? Cuddle me, rub my back. Sing, who's it? Sing, that's a good one. Choo choo noise. Shushing. Oh, shush, please, shush. Shush me. That's nice. Don't rock me. Can you rock me? Can I speak to you? Right, Lindsay, rock me. Come on, sing. Shush me. Right, so I'm already getting sleepy, right? I'm probably just going to have to go for a nap. So, my point being, a part of your nighttime routine would be to create baby conditions. Just put the orange in their mouth and eat it. And that's it, then just take a seat. Oh, no. Want to take a seat? Yeah, when you're done, take a seat. Yo, I am just out from delivering a science workshop, a sleep science workshop with my clients and at the end of the session we get to sit down, have a little chat and exchange some information about what they thought about the experience and this time, more than ever before, there was a consistency in some of the things that they really enjoyed. 
one particular thing popped up and I'd like to talk about it just now, and that is this notion of a threat detection mechanism. Maybe you have experienced this, you're away on holiday, away at your friends for the weekend, or you're traveling in business and you're sleeping in a bed or in an environment that's unfamiliar to you, and for some reason you just can't sleep well. You can't, you, you maybe get to sleep, when you wake up in the morning you feel terrible, you feel sluggish, you feel sort of half slept if you will, you feel suboptimal, and you can't quite put your finger on it. Well, that's what I was speaking about in this workshop. Imagine 500 years ago you were out and you are hunting for food and you had to travel a bit further than you normally would and in doing so it extended your hunt so much so that in the way back night had already fallen and it would be silly for you to travel in the dead of night because there's obviously a threat to your life and so you set down you hunger down and you create camp in an unfamiliar environment so when you go to sleep the average human sleeps about eight hours that's eight hours of non-conscious rest in an unfamiliar environment which would leave you unbelievably susceptible to predation. Evolution, as smart as it is, has bestowed us with this advantageous sort of biological mechanism which prevents half our brains, half our brains from switching off and going to sleep so that we can sort of scan our immediate environment but in our modern era we live, we have safety, we have security and we're very rarely in, in, in a, an environment where there is the potentiality for great risk. However, we are in, in environments that are unfamiliar and we cannot switch off these inbuilt evolutionary mechanisms. They are, they are deeply embedded in our psychology, our psyche, our DNA, our physiology. When you're traveling in an unfamiliar environment, your new friend's house, uh, an Airbnb, a hotel on holiday, or you're traveling in business and you're trying to get a good sleep because you want to be optimal, you can, but there has to be some sort of mechanism to override this, and there is, and that's what we were talking about. I was talking about human optimization, a topic that I'm very passionate about, and a couple of ways that we can overcome this inbuilt mechanism. And I'll talk on one, um, visualization. And I don't just mean visualization, you sit and you visualize whatever, no? I mean a specific process of visualization. So we live in a time now where we can gain access through imagery and through 3D, 360 augmented tours where we can actually be in the space where we're going to visit quite readily. So say you're going away in business and you're going to sleep in a new hotel or new Airbnb, well you can hop onto that website or that Airbnb's website and check out the imagery and maybe even float about and build up a schema. And what you want to do is in the weeks, in the sorry, the days leading up, maybe five to seven days leading up to your, your trip, use that imagery and that three in those 360 tours of that space to build up this mental blueprint, to visualize it for three to five minutes, only a couple of minutes every single day and build up that imagery in your mind. See yourself operating in that environment and, and make it very elaborate, building color and all sorts of things like that. And do that for three to five minutes every single day in the lead up. And what that does is that sort of familiarizes you, pre-familiarizes you with a place that, you know, more often than not, you wouldn't be able to become familiar with until you actually visited that space physically. So this hacks that mechanism, that biological mechanism. So visualization, three to five minutes, every single day in the lead up to your trip away. Someone is chapping the door. Who could it be? It's you! Another one of my friends. So I'm here in bed, relaxing in preparation for tomorrow, the last day of sleep science workshops. And uh, you might be wondering why I've got sunglasses on my head. Well, they're not actually sunglasses. They're blue blocking light glasses. If you notice, they have like a kind of 
orange tint and what that does is that minimizes the impact of harmful blue to white light that is artificial light so i'm watching a movie just now and that movie much like our telephone devices and our laptops that mimic that emits a blue light or a white light spectrum of light that mimics daylight it tricks our brains into thinking it's daylight so when it's in the evening when really the sun should be going down and our nighttime physiological hormones should be kicking in if we don't wear blue blocking light glasses or something that protects our eyes i call them condoms for the eyes then our minds, our bodies are going to think it's daytime again they're going to ramp up the daytime hormones cortisol, adrenaline, those sorts of things so we want to be maximising our nighttime hormones at night things like melatonin melatonin is a get good sleep hormone and as the day progresses melatonin should increase with the natural flux and flow of the 24 hour day night cycle but we live in a time now where we have more minute, more control over um, lights and artificial lights than ever before so we need to take preventative measures i.e. condoms for the eyes grab yourself a pair